Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Guile here, and welcome back to Sanctuary Dev Blog Episode 2. It's been about eight months, I think, since we did the last one. A long old time. I'm back again with lead developers Tatsu and Nine, who are going to let us know what's been happening in the intervening period. Thank you so much for joining me, guys. Hello and welcome. Hey there, Guile. Uh, thanks for having us on. It's always uh, great to be part of another Guile cast. Uh, the last one that we did with you had a like fantastic result. I think we got something like 35,000 views on that video. Uh, we had a whole bunch of people come onto our Discord because of it. And the big news is, is that we got a whole bunch of investors who put in some uh, money to finance uh, us to get us to that next level as well. So just want to say a huge thank you from Team Sanctuary um because it really made a massive difference to us it's always nice to hear right. always nice to hear really appreciate it so sticking with that theme where are you guys at now what's happening on the financing side of things is it going to affect the kickstarter are you still planning a kickstarter what's the plan right so kickstarter is about august now uh the, this year so that's pretty much what we have the finance to achieve at this point. So we'll need um, the cash injection from Kickstarter then. Um, meanwhile, we've been hard at work uh, ramping up the team uh, to spend the investor money, getting new developers, new artists. Um, we're looking for a VFX artist at the moment. Uh, we've got a marketing person. We've actually got about 20 people on the team now, so it's like quite a huge uh, increase from last time. I think we had like five full-time people um, eight months ago, so like you know, it's just exploded with activity. We're going to show you a couple of uh, images and videos um, of you know where things are at. So I guess we can just go and do that. The other thing is, yeah, with the Discord, I think we're up to uh, 4,000 uh, Discord users. No. Three thousand, uh, three thousand, uh, going on three thousand five hundred. Not four thousand yet. <laughs> it's about four thousand. We'll see. Yeah, after so this. three thousand. <laughs> um, but what would be great, guys, if uh, you guys want to support us and help us out? It actually makes a huge difference to us uh, to have you um, come and join the Discord or just jump on our mailing list. Uh, the way it works is uh, if publishers are looking at our game and they're considering if they would adopt our game and give us a pile of money to build it. They just look at how many people are interested in the game. Um, I know 35,000 people watched the last video. If all of those people were to click the join Discord button, it would make a incredible order of magnitude difference in the way that a publisher would view us. So it, it's a little thing that anyone can do. It's just like there's a um, we'll put a link in the description, but you can just join the mailing list for the beta or join Discord. And either of those things it takes like no time at all to do and really would make a huge difference. So thanks heaps for that. Should we go through the uh, images that we sent you? Let's do it. Let's do it. Sweet. Yeah, so this so... is the concept art for the biome so that mm -hmm. all the different artists can look at this and say, oh, you see that like pink flower thing down the bottom right? One that... guy's going to go make that. And it's, it's just kind of, kind of like a vision for it. That's Heather. And then Heather, you heathen. <laughs> oh, Scottish. you know the plan. So, well, I, I'm, I'm half Scottish, so I'm thrilled to see sort of, uh, you know, this kind of landscape crop awesome. up. <laughs> all right. Let's go to the next yeah. one. And so, like likewise, this is an, uh, another concept for Salars, which we could have a Salar biome. This is like uh, salt deserts. Or, or, That's a, um, amazing. You know, yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there's this different biomes that, that that we could have, and and obviously there's going to be places that are really like pushed to the extreme because yeah, it's been terraformed, but uh, behind that, both the war and just people messing around have meant that the biomes have gone through extremes that you would never see on yeah. planet earth and that creates new and interesting biomes of course this is in this case inspired by a place on earth it's inspired by a place <laughs> on earth but i have never seen a place like this in a textbook yeah. or anywhere so that's kind of crazy and here is just a whole bunch more concept art exploring the different biomes we had we're looking at making you can see like a volcanic one you can see you know more alien ones with like crystal stuff in there and the purple flowers the the hexagon type stuff just an exploration of you know the sort of biomes that we can put in the game uh, starting to see some ice creeping into it 
and the weird alien vistas that could be in it because you you got to keep in mind that this game's a it's in the future and b it's like you know we've got lots of sci-fi tech and the people who built this planet they were kind of like robots right they made it in like a vision of earth but that's not necessarily all that's there there could easily be you know other weird stuff that we don't even know about I really like the ideas of, of uh, where you could go with that. I remember you saying from the first uh, development uh, uh, blog, you're talking about how you were going to get light onto the front. You were going to have holes that was going to project light through and then you were going to reflect light back through mirrors. Are you going to be having maps where you're going to have holes actually in on the map or on the edge of the map? Is that something you're planning? So you can well, see a I bit think... more of the structure? I think it might yeah. be time for the big reveal, Guile, because um, oh, I know you've been ahead. waiting a long time for this, because <laughs> uh, six weeks ago I was telling you that um, we were going to give you an exclusive and you know announce our first big reveal, and um, this is it. So I know you've been waiting for a while, sorry about that. But the, um, the answer to your question is we're going to blow the goddamn shit out of the map. Yes! <laughs> so the super weapons in sanctuary don't just destroy the the bases and the units they actually crack the structure of the dyson sphere creating these massive rents like earthquakes through the ground racing through with all the light streaming up out from under there that's going to make the guard happy <laughs> <laughs> the guard are not going to be too happy so that's our um, map, as you know, and you can yeah. see the big like crack going through it. Um, you can see the infrastructure of Sanctuary underneath. That's uh, highly the, the beams. Highly innovative for an RTS to have something that actually affects properly affects the topography of the map you're playing on. That's awesome. Yeah, and like lots of uh, games, they do like terrain deformation, and yeah. people keep asking us, "Are we going to do it?" And we're not really that interested in doing little terrain deformation where you know you can build a ramp up to a cliff or anything like that. We're just going to crack the planet. That's amazing. So <laughs> this is like super weapon stuff, right? This is like post nuke type warfare. You know, you you it's like building the like you know, the most expensive unit in the game. It's like the one that can shoot this missile out, and if it lands, it completely destroys you know the enemy's base. But not just that, the cracks like randomly come out, and God knows what will happen. You'll have like the mountains falling down in, and if there's an ocean, you'll have a waterfall falling down in to what's underneath, oh. which is the sun. <laughs> When game enders properly yeah. end games, <laughs> when the map gets yeah. destroyed, <laughs> that's awesome. That's right. No, that's yeah. That's Here the, that's the idea the, behind um, the gameplay. There, it's it's really a game ender. Yeah. And here you can see the uh, earthquake shattering the skyscraper in the background. I love and it. It's just like collapsing down into it. I love so it. So we're still working out the balance implications of this. Obviously, like it's a pretty imbalanced idea, but like we say, it's a super late game thing. Yeah. Uh, we've also toyed with uh, some other um, versions of it. So it could be like not a huge earthquake, but just a small one. Um, the other idea is maybe Sanctuary can just heal because it does, you know, it is a self replicating nano surface that can, you know, build itself. Um, so maybe that is a solution. Um, we don't know. We'll sort all that stuff out later. But for now, the the message is is that we're just going to blow up the map, which I think is like really cool and is our most exciting idea that we have. Literal and we've been chills. holding on to that for a year. We've been like suppressing the knowledge of that because we had that since before we wrote the first line of code. Um, that idea. Um, I should also say that it's a bit of a stretch goal on Kickstarter. So we're going to, um, you know, build the core game. And this is, you know, an expensive feature. So guys, if you want to play a RTS game where you get to shadow the maps, can you please go and join our Discord? <laughs> because that would really help. Just another picture of um, Sanctuary getting shattered. You see you can see the side of the Dyson sphere and all the machinery and stuff, because it's not just like, you know, dirt under there. It's the stuff that keeps the whole Dyson sphere working. You know, they've got energy chambers and uh, the whole thing is like lined with um, solar panel. I just, 
oh, there, there's so much yeah. potential scope. And, and so there's yeah, there's also like maps that are that are going to be like um, they they just have that you know built in as as part of it. Like either it's a hub for lighting light through, or it's, you know that part hasn't hasn't been built yet, or something like that. And we could have that as part of the concept of the map. Um, a uh, hole there. See the, the sun. Yeah, you can see the sun there. Uh, yeah. And you can see a lot of the structure of Saint Tree. I mean, like we want to have as many reminders throughout our maps, like be it a, a bit of the superstructure or lots of superstructure of, of the Dyson Sphere sticking out of the map, or be it holes or or uh, or you know uh, portholes or whatever, um, to remind you that yeah, this is a, this is a Dyson Sphere that you're on, right? And it should be a constant reminder throughout our maps. It's not on every map. Some maps are perfectly fine because they've been fully sort of formed and there's no holes or anything. Uh, but others not, right? And so we want to have that variety. Yeah. And you can see some of those maps getting built in progress uh, on the Discord. Yeah. They're already starting to prototype up the maps that have these holes in them already, and then bridges over yeah. the holes and that type of thing. Are um, there going to be no fly time? zones over the holes where the fighters take damage from the? So, <laughs> yeah, we haven't taken uh, we haven't like taken our uh, um, balancing sure. runs on that and, and stuff, but. Um, uh, it is an interesting idea. I think that like um, the idea of it like damaging uh, units over time that fly over yeah. uh, the, the sunlight, that's a pretty interesting idea. Um, I don't know about you nine, but I think that uh, I'd want to do that because it's different than just you know flying over a mountain or flying over you know an ocean or whatever. We could we could have something happen there. Um, anyways, yeah. Well, they could get more vertical lift, right? Because in like real life, the, you know, when the heat is coming up, the planes start going up. Just saying, yeah. for a high altitude bombing run or something like that, I don't know. And then yeah. that would affect the projectiles as well. But we also have to make it fun, so yeah. <laughs> it doesn't always have to be realistic as sure. such. But yeah, this is going to be a um, this is our big hero effect. You know, the the missile's going to come down. It's going to like demolish their base. All these cracks are going to start like you know coming towards your base, and you know the light will be streaming through those cracks. You know the um, crepuscular rays, those god rays from the yeah. sun, they'll all be like shining up out as the the ground starts to crumble, and then it will just drop, and whole sections will just like fall in. Um, this is the big thing. This is this is our our main moment. I'm very excited. Oh yeah, that looks oh. damn cool. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so That's this beautiful. is the uh, current iteration of the the map that we're talking about. Uh, you can't quite see the sun underneath, um, but you know you you get the idea of the mountains and stuff it's just you know one of the iterations by the time it's finished it'll look much better but yeah you'll be able to make new canyons into the map as well <laughs> that's incredible guys that really is yeah yeah so yeah. sorry it's we took like... a, a while um to get to you on that you know we we also have another <laughs> reveal if you're interested i'll take I... i'll take everything you've got but uh, obviously only if you guys are actually ready to reveal it it's up to you at the end of the day i did we just can't reveal it for six weeks, so can <laughs> okay. we uh, <laughs> can we get back to you then? Yeah, if you want to, I'm uh, at your beck and call. Cool. You're a good man. Awesome. What were you saying, Tatsu? Yeah. No, I was saying like this is this you know um, we we can do a lot of interesting things with this uh, this mechanic where the map is you know sometimes destroys, sometimes it rebuilds itself. Here, it's like partially being rebuilt. I mean, like at first it starts by doing the the structure. And you can see that the people that were on the surface of the map took that opportunity to just use that little bit of structure and built uh, bridges to another piece of land that was still there, right? Uh, and so the, now they've got you know a bridge to to grow to go across those, those little those two bridges. You see them, hmm. right? And they're using the the superstructure underneath to be high wireframed as a support for their bridge. So this is what we call our alloy wells and our alloy extractors i just i love the depth of uh of law that that's going to kind of inform the gameplay the the fact that you've also you so you've got some bridges that are on that map i'm guessing as part of the actual map itself um assuming there will be these holes and and what have you have you thought about the idea of of bridges being uh 
craftable, so to speak, by the players in game to adjust. We have, and I, I think we're we're not going to do that for the moment, right. for the time being. It's it's not a good idea, and we thought about it gameplay wise, and it's not a great idea. However, uh, from a mapping perspective, it opens up a whole bunch of new doors to to have bridges. Like so, our our pathfinding is 3D compatible. Like most pathfinding that you have in any RTS out there, everything exists on a 2D plane. Even if that 2D has hills, mountains, whatever, anything, like the height can be a million or negative a million, the unit's just going to hop immediately down, right? But our pathfinding is, is like really in 3D where you can add like a little extra bit to the nav mesh where you're going to be like, well, okay, there's this bit uh, that's pathable, but there's also this bit on top. So you can go under and you can go over. Yeah. And so that, that allows for fully functional bridges where it's not just the map that looks like it's a bridge and you have units going across, but you never have units going underneath. We will have the ability to have units go both across and underneath. So it's not fully functional yet, but it's something that's not really that tricky to get working. Um, and I think it opens up a lot of gameplay possibilities. Like we, we mentioned before how we thought it would be cool to have some maps with ice on the water and everything. And at that point, you still have submarines that are able to go under the ice, but tanks are driving on top of the ice. You can get to these interesting interactions with units, both in the in the case of the bridge, where there's units that are shooting from up above on the bridge and the units that are shooting back from below, as well as submarines interacting with tanks or stuff like that. It's going to bring in a lot of interesting gameplay. Uh, also, when you have big bridges that are going across big lakes or something like that, you're going to have like tanks that are now interacting with, uh, with battleships, stuff like that, you know? Yeah. I don't know whether it's something you're considering, but it opens us up the uh, possibility of having uh, internal maps actually in the kind of superstructure of sanctuary itself i mean if that was something you're considering i've been thinking of starcraft it and all is. of the internal kind of battles you have there but yeah. it, it never really felt right. like you were properly internal in in starcraft because you didn't yeah. have the same like you're saying that multi-tiered kind of uh, passable terrain um well yeah. we're not going to do something where we have a whole map that's above the middle yeah. because when you just have a, a bridge you know it's fine you have like the st strategic icons and stuff like that and you can still kind of tell what, what's going on. But if you have like a whole map's worth and another map underneath, it, it would get too confusing determining what's going on. And we still want to keep that level of playability where you zoom out, you see the whole map and you and you yeah. get the picture. You get the idea of what's going on from the strategic icon. So we want to keep that, right? There's a certain amount of over under that you can keep where it's still understandable to the player and if you go over that then it just becomes too much completely confusing yeah 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 but the thing is we do want to have those maps for the service layers of saint tree where you're so a map where you're entirely in a thing that's made up of giant pipes and big metal beams and stuff like that i think it would be very, it would be quite interesting either it's because the whole terraform layer has been stripped away demolished or it's because you're actually playing underneath and you have a small amount of light coming through or, or just coming through a little bit of the portholes. But that would be a very interesting, a very cinematic map to be playing on. And on campaign as well, when you're going up against the guard from... Uh... Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And we can do a lot of things there, right? Uh, for example, it's one of those service layers that handles the big lakes that you're going to have in, in the surface. So it has like pumps and everything. And you start out at the very bottom of it and the lake up there is all filled up. But down there, the reservoir that you're in is all empty. So you start at the bottom, but you need to make your way to the surface and to, to the terraform layer. And so you built yourself a transport boat and you hop your engineers and your commander or whatever onto that. But now you need to flood the reservoir that you're in to go up and activate a switch that you can get to with an engineer. And then you, it starts to flood, you go up and you get to another level, you build up there, et cetera. We can do, we could do interesting missions with that. I think. Definitely. Definitely. Exciting it was interesting. Stuff. You were talking about the, um, how the, the lore is kind of rich and that, decision we made very early on to make it a Dyson sphere kind of drove everything after that. So, you know, the ground shatter sort of comes from that as an extension, the, um, the way the alloy wells are, that's an extension. Another one is like the way the commander is deployed. Cause like the, you know, what the commander is, he's basically like a rapid deployment unit where they can just, you know, there's a battlefield somewhere they need to get him there. Right. So what's the fastest way to get a commander to the battlefield? Cause Normally you would get him in a like a transport and just take him there, right? Yeah. But on a hollow shell, the fastest way is actually through the interior of a sphere. You wouldn't go on the exterior, you go straight through. So just lots of things are driven by that. 
Uh, we've had this picture for a while. This is a, a render that we've had showing off all the EDA units. That there is the first experimental that we had. That's the, I don't know what we're calling it these days. It's had many different names, but the idea is it just runs straight over units, has a big shredder on the front, grinds them down into dust, and you can just see that big exhaust like pluming out all the smoke. And maybe it'll actually start, you know, from the mass that it shreds, it'll actually start assembling units and shooting them out the back. So uh, this is a bomber. And the, what it does is when it, it creates a bomb, which is like an energy projectile, and it actually sits inside this orange circle, and then it releases it and drops the energy sphere, and then it makes a new one. I just love the attention to detail it's amazing well that's what happens when you let artists design factions lots of stuff like that uh another controversial sunset scene sunset gate on twitter <laughs> these are mirrors in the sky that's right mirrors yeah. reflecting the light back down that's fine yeah <laughs> They just happen to make them sun-looking shapes because yeah. that's what we identify with. Exactly. And psychologically, it's, we yeah, like it's to it. stop us going crazy. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. as it happens, uh, the simplest shape to make a, a big flat mirror, a very very thin mirror, uh, in in the sky, and the one that we've thought about for if we were to build a Dyson swarm around our sun with a bunch of mirrors to to gather the the energy, we would do it with uh, circular mirrors. So take that Twitter. There you go. Checkmate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, some more units here. I didn't start that, did I? Because I commented on that yesterday. I hope that wasn't me that kicked that off. No, no. I mean, I, I've I've gotten that before, but okay. it is pretty funny. Okay. I think it, I That's think everyone's right. gonna gonna get a I lot mean, of uh, nine was retweets. nodding. But... <laughs> Thanks for the public takedown, Guile. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was funny. I, I'm removing my Patreon. No, you're not. That's illegal. No, no. <laughs> yeah, let's just spring it on us. You can get our instant reaction. I did share it to, to, the, to the Patreon, so here it is. Cool. It's bad. Uh, and I think it looks just great. I love it. Yeah. So, oh, yeah, just wow. to show that, like, where we are planning ahead like in case things go well like right now maybe isn't a guarantee but like it's not really uh, a question of do we do we want navy or not we do want navy right <laughs> but do we have time for implementing all of that plus all the other things we have to do not necessarily with our current budget you know so yeah but you know we we are thinking ahead and we are like doing things like making the water shader that you saw already on the other map and and starting to to model the naval units in in case things go incredibly well, um, yeah. And you know if it if it comes down to like uh, we don't get a, a good uh, Kickstarter and uh, and stuff, you know, we'll we'll just make do with uh, with the sales of the game and uh, and implement maybe eventually. But anyways, yeah. <laughs> I just thought it's that's really beautiful. Cool it is coming. Yeah, it is coming along. Reminds me of that. What was the famous, um, the big Japanese battleship from World War Two? Yamato. That's it. Yamato. Yamato or yeah, Yamato. Yeah, I, did, I pronounce it wrong. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Yamato. Shades of shades of that in there by the looks of things, but it just it's beautiful. So these are some videos that we took um, just from Sanctuary, and we're just going to walk you through. So we have things like three different tech tiers. We have that working for the factories, the alloy wells. And in the background here, you can see the tech center, that building that looks like a, a radio tower. Uh, that's actually a tech center, uh, and that upgrades as well. And here's one being built. Um, what the tech center does is uh, it uh, uh, gives you the ability to uh, build units of, uh, of higher tech levels. So right now we have it um, set up to, you just have to, you know, build the tech center and that unlocks the ability to be able to build units of tech two, and then you can upgrade your factories to tech two and right. build tech two units. And then you upgrade the tech center and then you can upgrade the factory to tech three. And you have the option of building tech three units. Will that be a step so, yeah. for all of the factions or? Uh... That's yeah. right. It's, yeah. a, it's a thing that's that's for all three factions. That's how it works, right? 
And there were all uh, sorts of new things in that video. We saw the strategic icons. There was range rings. You saw um, orders for the first time. You saw um, the vision radius. So, you know, the fog of war. There was a lot of new things in that little clip. Yeah. So here's a guard base with guard units being showcased. And all of this is actually in the game. This isn't like renders or anything like that. This is Proper Sanctuary gameplay. itself. Yeah. Yeah. And mm -hmm. it, you know, keep in mind that it's early days and that these are just like um, what the yeah. developers have been making and um, taking themselves all these videos. So it's, you know, going to get a whole lot better uh, over the yeah. next eight months. And by the time we release to Steam, it's going to be awesome. As an example of something that we're not super happy about, that we're not super comfortable about, well, you can see it right there. There's no Intel code. Despite the fact that you have fog of war that's working correctly with the correct range from your units, there's no code to say the server shouldn't be sending the information about that unit. And right now you can see like all of green space, you can yeah. see all of the units on the, on the strategic icons. Um, normally you shouldn't be able to do that without uh, radar and everything. There is no radar building in the game right now, and there's no intel code in the game right now so despite the yeah. fact that we have visual fog of war yeah the fog of war as a game mechanic is not coded in yet so just have to make do for now and it's good to highlight obviously because people might get the wrong impression about where you are in stages of development it's important important to point out that lots of things are placeholder still and yeah yeah so there's there's all sorts of uh, different issues this is uh, not a complete game so <laughs> Yeah. Please give us a chance, guys. <laughs> More guard units driving. They're so pretty. They do leave me conflicted sometimes about selecting EDA. EDA? Mm. Yeah. 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 Yeah, they're pretty good. They're the most popular faction, oh, actually. My bad. Yeah, I've, I've noticed okay. that. I think Tatsu and I both picked god didn't we tatsu yeah 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 that's right yeah for me yeah. i've never actually played a race like that in a game before like you know you get your american army type people that's normal you get your um you know chosen kind of snobby super technical people that's kind of normal too but you know a team of replicating robots that can build a planet is new and <laughs> I just find them really intriguing. Like what makes them tick? What what are their motivations? How do they go about doing things? Why do they do stuff? And, you know, besides just building planets, what else do they do? Yeah. And it's a, I, I just want to try and be them. Oh, oh, construction animation. The building's getting built. That's a thing of beauty right there. That, um, there was a, those little splotches on the ground there, like the, alloy wells where you can build a yeah. alloy well it's a it's a placeholder uh, graphic for sure. uh, representing the the alloy well uh, actually obviously it's supposed to be this big hole with lights coming through uh and you know we'll do that but for now that's what it is <laughs> yeah yeah i forgot that the light's going to be streaming through from the sun itself so you can actually we don't need a marker for it because it's already going to be incandescent just naturally right so that's the air factory. Yeah, there's an important thing here is that the um, the bottom of the air factory is actually underground. So uh, half that factory is above ground, like the ground's here, and it's not just like the building is on top of the ground, it's inside the ground like right. this. Yeah, and it, you, that becomes obvious when you start rotating the camera and things. And the, the air unit is actually going to get built underground and stream out. That's beautiful. From a mm. hole, like that's a tunnel. Brilliant. Yeah, and the kind of gantry that you that you see here, it's multi-purpose. One, it can build units, and two, it can have units while it's building and doing other things, just come through and get repaired and then come back out. Yeah, it's like a tunnel of units flying in and out, like a stream. Reminds me of uh, Fragile Allegiance back in the day. I don't know if any of you ever played that, but uh, having air units built underground, you couldn't see the the silos and things that they were being built in, but you knew they were there. It gave you a sense right. of depth. No, I don't know that game. It's old, so very old. This looks like it's going to be a bit of a battle. So different units there. What do we got? We've got 
Oh, they got the. Well, this is all the chosen army. Yeah, this is T1 and T2, uh, or yeah, I think T1 and T2 tanks from chosen. No. Uh, no, uh, there's a there's T2 uh, T1 artillery uh, from chosen with uh, with the T1 tanks. Yeah. Uh, and NGs. And the NGs. For some Those flying things are NGs. Or they're they're the engineer, right? Yeah. All right. What are those things? Those are the things. artillery. Yeah. I don't think those are engineers, actually. Let me just check. Oh, they're scouts. Ah, uh, yes, that's what they are. Yeah. So uh, where are you guys at in terms of uh, a full, having full complements of units designed and, and whatnot? Are you pretty much there with with all of the units that you're going to have? Are you still modeling and designing new ones? Or? Oh, There's no, we're, we're very missing. much still... Yeah, no, no, we're still modeling. You know, I, yeah. and, Obviously, uh, you mentioned you've only the, got the, one or the... two boats because you're not sure they're going to be in at start, but... Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. no, we're we're um, we're still modeling. But like, if if you if you consider that uh, um, like we're just making gameplay uh, that has air and land, uh, then you know we're we're at a a, a playable amount of units for EDA, uh, close to a playable amount of units for chosen, and almost uh, you know almost as much for for guard it's a it's a uh, guard is the one that has the, the least units right now um but yeah it, i mean like in terms of uh, implementing any code it's not necessarily a problem because we can just put like uh you know a textualist box yeah into the game and, and be like that has x stats and, and stuff like that and we can balance around with it in terms of like modeling actually making the, the <laughs> unit and everything like that that's cool. still quite a quite a bit of work to do. Yeah, what? that's the artillery. It fires its, its shell quite high. Now, we did that like intentionally to, to showcase that, you know, high arc does function. So yeah. it doesn't need to go that high, but that's how we that's how we put it. This way it really demonstrates that, yes, the projectile can go like uh, really high and is still simulated. Um, you can see lots of yeah. the effects there. There were um, projectile trails, there were explosions, there was muzzle flashes going on, and the, the turrets were all turning to look at each other as the tanks drive past. They're all aiming at each other. They all pick um, the target based on like a, a target prioritization um, algorithm, you yeah. know, like the target priorities, but then also like which one's the closest, which is actually like which angle is. Um, the closest to turn, not the distance to the unit. It's actually how little it has to turn to the unit. Yeah. So where would you guys say that you were were at in terms of if you were just considering air units and ground units, if you had to put a percentage on how many you thought you had modeled, 100% being you had all of the, the ground and air units modeled, whereabouts would you you say you were at? Think about fifty percent, maybe okay. uh, forty-five percent. Um, yeah, the, the, the modeling's the... pretty good. What needs to happen mm. is the animations aren't there yet, yeah. and um, lots of little stuff. These units are going to come to life. They're all going to have little spinny bits on them, like little radar dishes. That stuff isn't there yet. Um, the texturing might change a little bit, and the um... the effects. Ideally, we uh, ideally yeah. we'd have a, 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 a unique VFX for for units. Um, so yeah, right now yep. we're, we're, you, you probably noticed we're like reusing a lot of the same VFX for, for, for different units. I mean, it's, it's not that noticeable, but, um, it's best if we could have a uh, different VFX because then they would be almost identifiable by the explosions they create. And then yep. even if they're off camera, you know, what's shooting at you. There'll be other effects as well. Like engines will have like a fire trail coming out of them. We don't have that yet. There's no footprints yet. There's no tread marks yet. Um, all these different things are going to come together to um, make the units come to life more. But the actual models themselves are okay. Yeah. They're good. Yeah. So this is our second map. It's the smallest uh, map size we can have. Uh, this map is uh, is called There is Time, map that was made by Jip. Quite Classic. a beautiful ice map. Classic 1v1 ladder match kind of map. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, Bruno right. designed it, didn't he? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. He, made, he made the design for this map. Uh, we had a then, competition you know... on Discord that I won, but then Tatsu decided to pick Bloodiers <laughs> one instead. Well, and I then mean, we made that. Should you even be allowed to enter, 
really. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's we what enter I was all of our competitions. Yeah, no, we do. Um, yeah, it's controversial, but you know, <laughs> we we just want to pick the best map. Not it's not about picking favorite people or anything like that. So if the best map comes from in or out of the team, then we're just going to do that. That's another topic that actually uh, we want to get into. One of the things that has been um, slowing us down incredibly, but is is well worth uh, all the time and effort that we poured into it, is uh, is making the entire engine moddable. So uh, as you'll be able to see later with the with the build that we're testing out, uh, we have a, a an LJ folder which stands for Lua JIT, and inside that folder we have all of the Lua which exports data blueprints for the units their their you know uh what they can what they can do um uh what what's the the size of their projectile the range the um the, the distance how many they fire per second um just every imaginable statistic uh you you have for for the units most of the functions that can be called like you know uh move attack or or all those kind of th kind of things um, and all those all those things you can just fiddle around with. You know, you can you can change to to suit your to your liking. You can uh, yeah, introduce that's a balance your own units. mod. Yeah. So besides the balance you can, mods, you can just create a whole new unit. You can create a whole new behavior. So the the that's what gave Subcom such long legs. That came up in one of the interviews we did with the Subcom dev team. Is that actually because Subcom was a moddable game? That's why people are still playing it. And um, if you look at other RTSs and they didn't have the mod ability, it just didn't last as long. So that's an interesting thing. Um, so we're doing that too. But like as Tatsu was saying, that really slows down the dev time. You know, you, you can just build something now and it's, you know, quick. But if you build it and it's moddable and it works for a thousand units, well, you know, yeah. things take time. So uh, there's a nice bug here. Watch the um, units that drive through oh, yeah. that um, the alloy the well. Decal is appearing on top. Yeah, <laughs> the alloy well appears on top of the unit, not underneath. So that's kind of cool. <laughs> but yeah. Um, anyways, yeah. So I, I think it's pretty cool that like at such an early stage of the game, we we already have it to to a point where everything is is moddable. I don't think there's like many games out there that can say that, but I think it's like a really good step ahead that we that we've taken here because um, it's kind of hard to introduce those kinds of things after the fact, right? Whereas if you really conceive everything from the ground up with that in mind, it's going to behave a lot better. Yeah, this map actually looks a lot better when you're zooming in on it properly as well. The um, mm -hmm. you know, there's a the video resolution is not doing us any favors right now, but you see all the like you know the rocks of the cliffs have details and there's tracks in the snow and things like that god so this is a guard uh base they are shiny man i can see why so many people are drawn to them <laughs> they're just a mystery to me you know yeah and you god are mysterious you i know what i got with the other guys you get the feeling it is different to to anything else we've seen in rts really i just don't know what they're gonna do <laughs> or, or in a movie either, right? Like they're just a kind of new law to me. I don't, yeah. I don't. They're not predictable. You can also see a bit more detail in this map. There's a cool video, but you see um, totally zoomed in to all the way zoomed out, and the detail is high all the way in. Some games, like when you zoom right in, it's like the details not that off. great anymore. Yeah, yeah. It's actually something that's always annoyed me, just from making thumbnails and things with uh, Subcom. And uh, Speed was supposed to help me. He said, I've, I've modded a thing for you, and it, it didn't work out at all. Or either that, I was implementing it incorrectly. But um, just, <laughs> you know, zooming out when everything becomes very blocky and low res, obviously, to to maintain performance issues, or like you know. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, making thumbnails and things, it's always infuriating uh, on yeah. FA, trying to contend with that. Yep, something to get a yep. feel of what it could look like. Yeah, a bit of micro. Someone's moving their units around. That's a point defense. I want to see the point defense open up. That's what I want. <laughs> They're not within yeah. range here. Yeah, <laughs> but we're actually is... um, looking for a new VFX artist. So if anyone's yeah. interested in um, or knows somebody who's you know into RTS and likes um, 
you know, making VFX and wants to join the project, we're actually looking right now. So um, if you can put us in touch with them, that would be great. Um, Sid was our VFX artist for a while here and he made most of the effects that you see here, but he's uh, moved along to some other work now. So we're back to the drawing board. Should get in contact with uh, RK. He did the explosions. Mod. Oh, we tried. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah uh, couldn't get in touch. Yeah, I haven't seen him for yeah. a while. Yeah, well, he's been off the scene for a very long time. Yeah, mm -hmm. I like those muzzle flashes. You see them coming out of the barrels and stuff. They're very nice. Bit of an explosion. We've got a unit rec shader as well. We haven't put that in yet. So what, what's going to add to this that's going to make it look a, a lot better is um, when a unit gets destroyed, it obviously leaves a wreck, but yeah. there'll be a scorch mark on the ground underneath it, and there'll be a big smoke yeah. plume as well. You also nice. see little bits flying out. Um, and, you know, this already looks pretty good, but once you add that in, you really get the feel like you're crushing a base because you get to see all the dead stuff left behind. It doesn't just disappear, yeah. right? I always felt We're that... also talking um, about cutting some units in half, so maybe some weapons can actually like clean cut them. So rather than just you destroy it and that it's would be um, cool. black, it just like falls in half. Is that uh, like that. going to increase uh, performance issues, like having to have that kind of thing, or? Um, it's more like a dev time consideration because you know you can just turn that off. You know, there's a adaptive performance as well where the game actually looks at its own frame rate, and right. if it works out that your frame rate sucks, it can just like not render that effect. Yeah. Because if it's not important to the game, then who needs it, right? Yeah. Um, but mm -hmm. if you've got a beast of a computer, then you can have all the bells and whistles. So we we can it just is... like turn that stuff up and down. It's for a, a unit that uh, you can basically perceive it as a UI mod. It's for a unit that's dead anyways. So all you're doing is, um, you know, if that thing is is within your camera, frost run is close to your camera. Instead of playing this animation and this effects, we're going to play this instead, right? Yeah. I can't wait to see bases like this with their shields up. I, I That was the thing that actually first got me excited about Sanctuary were those very early shield animations that you sent out. Yeah, I remember just, that. You're, you're, you're crazy about that shield. I, <laughs> yeah, it blew me away. Absolutely blew me away. And one thing yeah. that I Kubo. think there's an issue with the guard stuff, although I love it, those buildings look great, but I'm just thinking that they, um, they kind of look like wrecks when you're zoomed out. Like around here, they kind of look like dark, colorless buildings. And that's what a wreck looks like. So we might need to have a look at what Just boost the light making them, out them different. I mean, we'll have to do something because they've got lights on them on the, the models, but it, it's not so apparent. Maybe when you zoom out, is there a way you can amplify the lights at further distance? Well, uh, well, I mean, we could, but like, uh, we, we these are just like emissions, right? So yeah. uh, instead, we can add, you know, like um, point lights, and then they can uh, be actually, you know, if it's like the the night time or something like that, then it'll be very evident with, that there's like um, that that these guys have spotlights and that they're shining them on the on the terrain in front of them, yeah, which will look pretty nice in, in initially. Yeah, nighttime missions are something cool. So we've done a few mock-ups. We don't have anything to show you, but you know, there's been scenes where we've turned the sun right down, so it's like more sunset or something like that, or even nighttime, and then you get like the headlights of the vehicles driving around and all that type of stuff. But that does have performance considerations because lighting is an expensive thing in um, in graphics rendering. So we don't know how that one will work. Now this big pile of cool ideas that we're not looking at right now because you just got to pick your fights, right? Um, the other thing that's really interesting is um, the the models are procedurally textured. So we don't like hand make all the textures for all the different factions. We do with um, Chosen. They're like hand painted by Avatus and it, it is really fun to watch him doing that, by the way. He just does it with like a brush in uh, Photoshop. That's all he does and it looks amazing. But these ones are procedurally textured. So what that means is you just run it through like a program. You tell it how to yeah. texture units and it just goes and makes it That's for your incredible. units. So then you can tweak it. And if you like someone comes along and says, oh yeah, it's too black or whatever, we can say, all right, we'll substitute it with a metal gridlock pattern or something like that. And then you just rebake it all and it it exports a whole new set of textures for every unit at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, Nine mentions watching Avatus work and how satisfying it is. I got to agree, it's pretty cool. And for those that want to do that, he actually 
streams regularly on our Discord his work. So you can actually see him work live. Um, sometimes you can see Red modeling live. Kubo has done it as well. Um, and Philip so is about three... to start streaming. Philip, the uh, musician yeah. who does all the orchestral music, has worked out how to stream it as he's uh, producing the music. And his music is awesome. So I'm going to actually check some of that out. Mm. And it's important to mention yeah, as well, T2 point defense. with uh, all of these uh, assets, or a lot of them, uh, you've been able to view models and uh, whatnot on your Patreon for some time. And uh, in fact, this video, if you're watching it now through YouTube, it will have come out with privileged access a few weeks early over on Sanctuary's Patreon. Uh, Sanctuary's only, it won't have been available on mine. So if you want to get all of the updates relating to the project as they happen, you guys need to go and sign up to uh, their Patreon and uh, get the privileged access. Yeah, and on that, thank subject, you for that <laughs> massive plug in thank there. you to uh, all of our Patreons who have supported us. Some of them have been there for right. a very long time as well, and it does make a difference, guys. And it's, no, it's just, been huge. It's been yeah. it's been allowing us to pay for a dev just so you guys can can wrap your heads around you know how much that actually makes a difference. This is this is a guy's salary, so thank you. Yeah, thank you. God's the coolest faction. <laughs> not biased. I might have <laughs> to. Not yeah, biased. I might have to change. But now you've got to have some people. No, you can't. You, you can't change. I, well, I might have to create a new account. <laughs> <laughs> Which will also make oh our Discord God. numbers. <laughs> Inflate the numbers, sure. Yeah. Oh, that's not unacceptable. <laughs> <laughs> no faction switching. <laughs> The moderatable offense. They are. Uh, yeah. So no. I, in all seriousness, like it's it, it's not it's not so, um, too much of a big deal if people like feel like they made a mistake. They can ask, and and we can uh, help them to switch their faction. That's fine. I feel like lots of people don't know what we're talking about, but when you go into our Discord, you have to pick which faction that you want to like align with, and you just do it by clicking a button right on a like an emoticon, and it assigns you that role. And then now you're part of that faction and you get access to like a special text chat where you can talk about your faction and stuff like that. So that's, that's what we're talking um, about. Early access to, to models and stuff by the, the faction modelers. And Giles saying that this is making him want to like change because he's part of the no. um, those EDA I'm clubs. Gonna stick. I'm going <laughs> to steady on. I'm going to stick <laughs> with my boys. They've mm. had a rough deal. That is a wonderful looking base though. Mm. need some walls but really when these bases are going to come alive with the tarmac that's just yeah. going to put the, like a bit of concrete underneath each building yeah. and then uh, little lines in between buildings that are nearby and they might be like lit or something like that but it's going to bring it all together it's yeah. going to feel Finishing like a nice touches. place yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah but it's already like really there yeah, and you see these things like you like start analyzing other RTSs, and you see some games have tarmacs and some games don't, right? And the ones that don't have it, they just look kind of like cartoony. Yeah, and it it actually really unifies it. So this is going to look a lot more realistic once you have that in Absolutely. there. Absolutely, as well. You can, you can tell it's just it feels like it's missing, and I and I don't think that that's just because we're so used to looking at Sopcom. I think it's you know it, they don't look like they're they're stable unless they have some kind of foundation that's visible around them yeah yeah and that's part of the whole yeah. faction identity as well as like when they have a different type of tarmac I mean, like obviously the the chosen ones will be kind of curvy and the eda ones will be angular right and then once all that is patterned all over the base it'll just feel like an eda base right because of all that yeah that's a pgen that's it actually cool. the part see half of this building's underground you can see it here yeah yeah and the same with the page and the actual um it's recessed into the ground the ground is here and it's like a cup taken out of the ground with the uh the sphere hovering on top is that tricky at all from a yeah. development perspective having like cutting into the mass yes. of these things 
Yeah, it took a long time to, to figure out uh, the, because so, this isn't like, uh, oh, we manual place the building and then manually place the whole of it. Obviously, we want to have that happen automatically and we want to have it like yeah. do it for every single building that, that spawns on the spot and seamlessly, right? It doesn't ever have to appear after the fact or whatever. No, it's as soon as the building starts building it. So yeah, that, that took a while to figure out. It was both a bit of a technical art on Ozone's part and then code that had to be written from ANSI and yeah, yeah. Uh, all of our devs. The lights reflecting off this building really nicely at the moment and you can see the team color, all those green bands. Yeah. You can see, you can see deep into that building, which is going to be funny because when the building dies, the ground's going to come back. But let's forget about that. <laughs> <laughs> There's like things like, I think when you're designing a game, right, there's things that just don't really make much sense. Lots of things don't make sense in games and you just have to like not try and make it too realistic because you'll just spend ages on it and it's not fun, right? A game should be fun. Optimize it to be fun, number one, yeah. and be realistic, number two. I mean, can you sort of partially get round, round it? I mean, with the fact, can you make the wreck of the building still seem like there's the depression there and then maybe once it's no, reclaimed. No, we, we totally can. We totally yeah, can. Yeah, so I mean yeah, that's, that's not a problem. Then that's not And then you reclaim weird. the building and then, and then the ground's mm -hmm. healed. Yeah. Cuz yeah. that's part of it, you know. <laughs> Ecological uh, con conservation. <laughs> oh, they heal the ground, right? Yeah. The, yeah, the yeah. NG that reclaims the wreck also like patched it up. Yeah. It's like a handyman. Just, yeah. <laughs> Puts, you can uh, see the some grass unit shaking. Yeah. yeah. It's very we nervous. Have a, yeah, we, we have a pathfinding issue at the moment where units like to quiver. But that's mm. okay. <laughs> Reveal for me as well. Holy crap. That's a lot of units. That's a lot of ants. Mm. Looks like low order T1 yeah. right there. So, yeah. Uh, the I think that's like uh, two thousand, like one one thousand on the on Team Blue, or actually probably four thousand total. I mean, uh, I'm not sure. Um, anyways, the the FPS is getting was like thirty thirty six, still not bad, you know, that's for that many units. Pretty impressive. That'll get better as well, like with optimization and stuff. By the time yeah. it's released, it should be better than that. Oh, look at those little lightning bolts. Yeah. With the VFX at the moment, it just plays a random um, explosion anytime anything explodes. Yeah. So they don't actually match the units or the weapons. Right. It's basically just random fireworks happening. We have like you know a, a a group of different effects, and it just uses one. Yeah. Later on, that'll be determined by the unit blueprint. So you know this type of tank shoots this type of bullet. It has this type of explosion. There's so much potential here, though. It's so exciting. Yeah. But those trees were, were made by Ozone, and I'm, I'm pretty happy with them because they're built for performance, and they're great. Like, they take a 10 or, or less FPS hit, which is really, really good when you're talking about, like, hundreds of trees uh, or, or even thousands of trees that you have all across the map, right? Are um, they imposters And it can now? be better. No, they, they, we haven't even done the imposters technique yet, so right. uh, we need to, you know, make their LODs version, the different LODs oh. for the trees, and then, and then after that, we can make them into imposters. And that is just going to give us a, 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 really, a lot. really big, yeah, it's going to give us a really big FPS boost. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, these units, um, they need to be animated. We haven't done any walking animations or like there's one, but once they start walking, coming to life, um, that's going to be really beautiful. And then there's a piece of work that we have done where you actually blend animation. So while part of the code is playing the walk animation, a different part of the code is rotating his turret to shoot in a different directions. Those animations don't know it about each other, right? They're two completely different things because one is just playing the walking yeah. and the other one is totally about where a tank's position. And yeah, they're totally different, but we have code that blends them all together and mixes it nicely so you can aim and walk at the same time. Fantastic. And that's one of the uh, chosen experimentals. Yeah. I think of it as a beetle, like a rhinoceros beetle or something like that. But I'm, I'm sure Avatus, if he watches this, he's going to be saying, oh, God, no. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and by the way, the, the animation code that uh, Nine was talking about just now, it's not an animation code that's built to do this for one unit. It's built to do this for 10,000 units at the same time. Yeah. Right? 
Mm -hmm. no. We built every single block. We just looked at it from just the, the end point view, like, okay, what is it supposed to support in the end game? Mm -hmm. um, and this is why like building each of these individual blocks and even <laughs> assembling them uh, is taking so much time, right? But uh, it, like we are building uh, things to be uh, really, really scalable and like to, to have a lot of overhead in terms of optimization and in terms of like uh, how far it can go, right? We're building things to be future-proof. Yeah, and then your LOD comes into that as well. <clears throat> like with, um, <laughs> sorry, it's interesting to me anyway. It's probably too detailed, but there's, um, you don't bother animating units that are off screen. So if there's a thousand tanks, but half of them are over there, you just don't bother animating those guys. You only animate the ones that yeah. you're looking at now. And with uh, the game, either you're zoomed in and you're only looking at a few units or you're zoomed out and you can't see any details anyway. So either way, you don't really look at that much stuff. So the challenge for us is just to organize everything so that you show the right stuff at the right time. And if you pull that off really well, it looks really good. Um, and that's all the whole LOD problem. And then, but one interesting thing about that is um, we do need to animate things whenever a unit shoots, because we need to know where the muzzle was. So if that unit was walking and he was holding a gun and he shoots, even if he was off screen, we need to know just on that one frame where was he positioned so we know where the bullet leaves Continuity from. Continuity is important, yeah. So yeah, that's probably way too detailed, but this is the sort of stuff that interests me. So I'm know, just going to throw some of it out there. Yeah, it's important as well for everybody to understand this is why game development, especially of a large title, takes as long as it does because there's just so many yeah. different things you have to consider if you're going to make a successful title. That's right. And, you know, anyone can just go and make a tank walking or something like that now and say, oh, look, I did this in three days. But yeah. you have to do all of that stuff and you have to mix it with all the other factors like networking and all these different things and you know things just take forever but it's a whole lot of fun yeah. we'll have different effects for the construction but at the moment they all just share the same thing we get feedback from people and some uh, there are people out there who are really interested in the details and the technology and how things are built and all that sort of stuff um, people tell us that they, you know oh my god i was really interested in that thing over there so on our website uh, we have some dev logs where they talk about um, how they built certain things, things like targeting. How do you write targeting for 10,000 units? Pathfinding. Yep. Um, there's all these different things. Besides that, we have interviews with uh, different members of the dev team so that you'll see, you know, just our musician is talking about his work and all the different, uh, you know, we've got modelers, we've got programmers. So if people do want some of that information about how things are built, then that's a good place to, you know, get a whole bunch of information. Fantastic. Yeah. And we did a big reveal recently of having hired Uvesso a while back, but not having made it public. Uvesso has been part of the team since July, I think of last year. He's effectively been working on AI as, uh, as people might imagine. So what's happening here is that yes, um, AI is, is still a, a stretch goal of the Kickstarter, but we are uh, planning ahead once again, because uh, yeah. this is, this is just the kind of thing that, that really you cannot strap on to already existing code if you once again if you don't start making a scaffolding for it just from the get-go you're going to have trouble yeah. adding it into your already existing code base so that's why we're we're uh, taking steps ahead regardless of whether or not we do have the funds to develop full ai and the campaign and everything that goes with it there it is the cat's out of the bag but there's already two ai devlogs what we're doing right now is building the framework for ai not building ai proper like ai is basically the code that is going to tell the ai to when this do this when i lack resources go out looking for alloy extractors to to construct and that's the different thing what we're doing right now is providing a framework for AI code to call. So first of all, for an AI to be able to do any of that stuff, it needs to understand to be able to basically decode what the map is. Um, it needs to be able to know information about what it's receiving in terms of Intel, what it knows about its own economy and stuff like that. All that needs to be interpreted. And that's the first uh, layer that's being built right now. We're providing tools for AI code to work with. Definitely reassuring, I think, for everybody to know that you're laying the groundwork in such a big way so that you've got the option to do all these things later on. I think people can appreciate the difficulties, as we've said, with game design. You're not always going to be able to, to get everything you want as indie developers. and You've got a list of things you would like to do, but it 
definitely seems like you guys are going about it in a sensible manner leaving all the doors open for anybody who's watching this who doesn't know who he is he's one of the developers from um the faf subcom community and he does a lot of modding work for ai over there and in fact he's like the pioneer and leader of all the um sort of more cutting edge ai over there so we're really happy to have him join us they got like videos of um the computer fighting itself as well you know they're they have bases, they create units, and they send the units at each other. So that started. But the um, I guess what Tatsu is saying is we're not committing to building a full-fledged AI. We haven't committed to building a campaign. No. We would love and to it's... do those things. But right yeah. now, we're just um, taking small steps, and we'll see how it goes because we... Uh, we, we might not have enough funding to do that properly. But if you want to help, go join our Discord and we can get a publisher. And, you know, you can see from these videos that it's not there yet. And the, it's rough around the edges and the units quiver when they drive. And there's, you know, there's issues. But all of the building blocks are there. You've got factories make units. You've got units shoot units. And you've got engineers can build, um, they can build factories. And we've got economy, we've got the power and the um, alloy. It, it's all working properly. And, you know, it's a moddable game and it's with a modern rendering engine. Like that's a lot of game right there. It runs over the network. You can play multiplayer with two people. Um, well, you can play multiplayer with more people, but only one of them will have uh, some features <laughs> but it's it's a work in progress but there's so much there already um we have financing to run us until august um that's a lot of time and we're, that's with a ramped up team that's not without the team that we've run for the last eight months we've doubled the team or more and now we're going to go for eight eight more months so by the time we go to kickstarter things should be looking pretty good and then the Kickstarter can be used for things like funding the campaign, the full AI, shattering the map, all those sort of more like optional extras and things like Navy and things like that, that we yeah. can't just really slip in right now. No. Yeah. I mean, it's quite an this achievement is... already because I, I think in the last video, your plans were funding was going to run out in December and that's when the Kickstarter was going to have to go. So, I mean, it's amazing that you guys have secured enough to bring you a large portion of the way through this year and now your kickstarter will have so much more development behind it already that you'll be able to yeah. show to people look this is what we've got and this is you know what we need to to make a fully fledged finished polished article um it's exciting yeah, yeah. It, it's starting to to look like a, a much more uh uh a much nicer proposition a much more you know enticing deal like yeah you know there's this much left to go again you know oh yeah. okay then <laughs> yeah and on that subject if anyone's interested in in investing um and wants to become a part owner of sanctuary please get in touch with uh tatsu because he's um pretty well he's very used to having that conversation with people now we really have hired a bunch of people and are delivering a game in August. So if anyone would like to support us, um, we do have like an information pack that we can send out and things like that. Um, and you can join the team. And also a big shout out to the investors. Thank you guys. Awesome. Thank you. Making dreams come true. That's the yeah. thing about like this game was not hard to sell to investors at all because they all felt that the world needed a game just like this. Just like talking to you, Guile, is uh, you you seem to have come up by yourself with the whole idea that this game should exist, that there needs to be a modern spiritual successor to RTS games that we love. Um, they felt that too. And when they just saw someone doing it, they're like, cool, well, let's get this thing done. And I think that there's a lot of people out there who have been waiting for something like this. And now is the time, guys. Let's get this thing done. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I, I felt like <laughs> I felt like it needed a sequel about five or six years ago. Um, but it's kind of exciting that that, I mean, you think how much technology has moved on since then. I, I'm sure you've got a lot more options doing this game now than you would have done back then. That in itself yeah. is a bonus. And, and in terms of like, yeah, and in terms of like game design, this is just going to be better now. Yeah. Uh, 
this is a better option than a, a sequel would have been. This is a different game with terrain shattering, as we mentioned, with bridges, with a whole bunch of, you know, uh, to be revealed. Wall. Yeah, well, there's also a, a whole bunch of, you know, to be revealed ideas that, you know, like this one that, that we've been holding on to and keeping secret for a year and a half. We, we, we still are keeping secret. So this is a way more interesting game, in my opinion. EDA ones. Yeah. EDA should win this fight. I see what you mean by the height. They, they're enormous, aren't they? Yeah. Much more of an yeah. advantage. Yeah. So I guess that has balance implications, and that's the sort of stuff you got to think about with your unit design, like when you're designing your faction and designing your point defense and all the factions' point defense, and also the building footprints um, different as well. I think we've got them centered at the moment, but they actually can fit on a smaller footprint than another T2 point defense because they're skinny yeah so you could do this thing where <clears throat> you make them sort of cheap and bad but you can build two of them and maybe two of them is better than um one of the other or something like that yeah and then yeah that gives the player options right because maybe he wants to stack them right next to each other or maybe he wants to spread them out so there's diversity in that yeah, and we can afford to have a lot more factional diversity since we have three factions, not four. I can see those linking up really nicely with wall sections, the, just because mm -hmm. they're so high up. You could imagine them uh, sitting yeah. nicely in amongst other wall sections. There's also yeah. this idea of building them on top of walls, and there's another so idea of say. building <laughs> walls on top of walls, so you make like super high ones as oh, well. Oh, wow. Okay. I'm not saying that we're definitely no, doing all but of these it's, things. No, but it's but... interesting to hear, mm. you know, these things are being discussed and it gives you an idea of the scope that uh, yeah. you guys are playing with, which is awesome. Yeah, and all this is going down on the Discord. You know, fans are just talking to each other about half of this stuff. So, you know, we, we're off somewhere else discussing ideas together as a team, but they, are, they generate lots of ideas as well. And it's... Um, I think it's really interesting to watch what people come up with. And on that subject, people came up with a rift idea without being told by us, right, Tatsu? So, you know, the yeah. destruction of terrain and seeing the sun underneath, someone, a community member, actually came up with that before we announced it. Like, mm -hmm. we, we had it before they did, but they actually figured it out. They independently came up with the idea. I think that's really cool. Yeah, there's this other piece of work that was um, quite complicated about playing the audio, because you have to work out where to, like, if there's a thousand bullets, you don't play them all, because that sounds terrible. You have to pick which ones you play and where you play them. Yeah. And it's based off where the camera is and the zoom level and the importance of the unit. That's got to be quite that complex. Looks... It's even more, isn't it? <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, Jesus. That's insane. It's, it's Badump in particular who loves to make tests where he's going to generate tons and tons of units. I think it, these ones are, are made by bread, um, but yeah, they, they just love to have like so many units on screen and really pushing the engine to its limits. It works though. That's, what's, that's what I love. There's this bug with the nav mesh where sometimes units like um, push against each other and they're going to push units through uh, outside of the nav mesh. Yeah. And yeah, whenever whenever that happens, like it, it's you know, uh, well obviously it's it doesn't doesn't look good and everything like that, but it also like makes the the pathfinding confused. It's like that unit's not supposed to be there. Um, it's from nowhere. Yeah, um, but yeah. Anyways, uh, we're still uh, we're still struggling with that bug. I know it's gonna it's gonna be fixed eventually. It doesn't like it doesn't look like one of those um, difficult bugs to to fix it. You know, um, there's many um, different possible solutions. But can units still what... push each other off cliffs? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah you yeah. can't drive off a cliff, but you can get pushed straight off. No way. And you way. survive yeah. it. Yeah, that's yeah. not meant to happen. Oh, okay. It <laughs> 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 was something you designed. <laughs> Work in progress. No, no, no. Oh, no, it's, it, uh, it is something you designed. It's not a bug, it's a feature. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah. Zillions of tanks oh my all gosh. shooting the shit out of each other. So yeah. Not the not the kind of gameplay that uh me and Nine go for, but I know that like uh, a lot of the community uh, out there 
Yeah, um, that's all of us. Likes to see a bunch of armies just below. fighting each other. Well, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it's possible. That looks like my standard tactics. <laughs> just drive into the enemy. <laughs> That's because I don't have the APM to focus on managing a base and moving units at the same time. Yeah. Well, it's a challenging game, isn't it? <clears throat> yeah. Tech 1 doesn't have any dot underneath. Tech 2 has a yellow short dot, and then Tech 3 has a white long dot. Right. And then we don't know what's happening with T4 yet. We'll see. We don't have any T4 we just, units just in the make, game. We just redesigned like everything from, from the ground up, be it maps, trees, you know, stretchy icons, whatever. Just have to redo everything. I should mention, they're actually not pixel perfect threat icon for a long time, like a militant of like, oh, no, they have to be pixel perfect and everything. And I eventually lent it on that debate because uh, people were like, you know, uh, first of all, you want to do something new and different and look at uh, the, the better aesthetics. We can get you kind of that smooth look and that, that looks a lot nicer. It's much softer on the eyes. All the while, we still have a, a pixel aligner for the strat icons, which makes sure that the symbol that you have in the center falls exactly on the pixel so that it remains readable. But with the border, you can have something that's smoothed over so it looks a lot better. Yeah. The good bit about our icons, though, is they 4K or HD or whatever. So there's four different um, zoom levels that you can have them on. Yeah. Actually, I think we can go up to resolutions that don't exist yet, like 16K awesome. or something like that. Um, yeah, again, future proof. Yeah. Long legs. I love my advanced strategic icons mod. That's good. Good shit, man. I mean, like, this is what we're getting into is like, people have preferences. Like, the game allows for a whole, uh, for a whole variety of different gameplay, right? And it attracts a whole variety of different gamers that, you know, are each looking for their different thing, but they can all play together thanks to their, you know, UI mods where they're going to be like, yeah. well, I want to have icons like this. I want to have my UI like that. I want to have, you know, the, this unit look like that. And that's fine because it's, you know, it's just on your end. So you can still like connect. And if you want to have something that's actually a sim mod that changes the gameplay, that's fine too, as long as you have it synchronized up by your launcher. So yeah, we're going to welcome all of that. Yeah, we could download the map editor and, and try it out. It's like really, really come into its own. It's, it's fully featured now and it's in, it's in version 10. Well. 0.10 people have been using it more and more because now it's a functional tool and we've got a fork of fafs map generator tool for sanctuary so now i'm going to create randomized maps for sanctuary um but yeah, yeah that, that's that, an interesting uh, the... point we got map gen now so one of the sanctuary uh community members ported the faf community's map generator to the sanctuary format so we got randomly generated maps which i think is really cool and that's thank amazing. you because that's awesome um probably needs a bit more work yeah. but the shout out to extraneous toe man. yeah man good job um so that's really cool I, I love map gen so i think that's a great idea and then he we got permission from the authors of that very gratefully and that was made by uh, Neroxus and chica so they've really really outdone themselves on that and that's just absolutely absolutely awesome so if anyone wants to yeah. check that out that's worth a look yeah and, and ozone x he's been really slaving away on the the map editor and doing an incredible job there the, the map editor is a really really great tool i invite everyone to try it out obviously it's still not a finished product and everything like that one thing that's not a self-evidence is that there's like a drop down and you can in the drop down you have like new map uh, that button is actually not bound to anything yet. Uh, so what you have to do actually is open up one of our maps first, like you open up two-step shuffle, for example, and then you can just start replace all the textures and everything with like a, a white, you know, file and you start from scratch, right? You start like modeling the train height and then the, the paint brushes and all that stuff. And it's got all different kinds of like symmetry that you can use, mirror symmetry, radial symmetry, and all that stuff. So it's a really good tool. Work in progress. Yeah, there's some really good maps coming out of it already. So we've been showing you, they've been made with uh, the map editor. Yeah, the thing that we don't really have yet that we need is a decal library. So it's a whole bunch of like little stamps that you put on a map that add a whole bunch of detail yeah. to it. We don't have that um, work in progress, but even without that, the maps look so good. And if you just go and check it out, the detail that's in them um, kind of surpasses what we've seen in other games and they, they look pretty freaking awesome so Fantastic. if anyone is uh into mapping and wants to come along and try it there's um a community sort of starting to tinker about and make some maps so now's the time 
I've got a whole bunch of keys that I got in like a humble bubble for a whole bunch of uh, different Steam games. You can make a contest for mapping where I offer those the 800 euros worth of Steam games. Fantastic. Uh, could, yeah. You know, could make a, a mapping contest for those. Right. Well, thank you very much, guys. Uh, fantastic content, as always. It's an amazing project. I'm looking forward to the future episodes we've got going. We Hopefully, we're going to have some gameplay coming up in the uh, the next video. Not sure exactly when that will be, but hopefully it'll be in the not-too-distant future. Definitely won't be another eight months. Uh, there's a lot going on on your side of things. Uh, message to all of you guys, though, if you really want this to continue and it to be a success, you've got to get involved. Join the Discord. Join the Patreon and uh, try and give these guys the, su the support you can. If you enjoy my content, uh, eventually at some point I'm going to need a game to move on to. Faf, as wonderful as it is and as amazing it is, as it is, it isn't going to last forever because why? No game ever does. So we're going to need some other stepping stone to move on to, some other proper spiritual successor. And as we've said throughout this video, I haven't seen anything that's really come close to this uh, since 2007 since fa was first released so we really really need your support guys if you're going to make this a success so uh yeah until next time stay well and stay safe this is tatsu nine and guile signing out thank you